Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Um, this video is the installation of the MP disc brake uh, conversion that I bought. Um, it follows on from the last video where I um, was swapping over the beam and removing the drum brakes. So I hope it's helpful, I hope it's informative and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Right. It's time to unbox the brakes. So, it comes in two boxes. Um, the ones I went for were these MP brand um, brakes. They're not the most expensive. I don't know if they're any good. I haven't read any reviews on them. Um, I would have liked the CSP ones, but they're over double the price of these. I haven't got the fastest Beetle in the world, so I think these are more than adequate. Um, and drum brakes work really well if they're well maintained and adjusted and all of that. Uh, the reason, or one of the reasons why I decided to go for these disc brakes is that um, you don't have to adjust them, they're self-adjusting. Um, and if I was to buy new um, drums and shoes and stuff like that, then you might as well just buy this kit and have a bit of an upgrade. So that's what I did. Um, so let's have a look what's inside then. So box one of two. Instructions. Very important. There we go. Oh, there's a couple of boxes. Okay. So I'm guessing these are probably the uh, the discs. Because of the bolt pattern of these earlier beetle wheels um, is the reason why these disc brake conversions are a lot more expensive. It's because if you look at this, at this disc, like a conventional disc on most cars, just consists of this disc but because of the um, wide five uh, configuration of these early wheels you need like this I don't know what you call it adapter type thing so this is why these conversions are a bit more expensive so that's another one of those let's open this one Okay, lots of bits. Okay, made in China. Okay, they're pads. Is that the same side? Pads. Oh, it comes with a brake master cylinder. I don't need that. It's a single one as well. That's funny. I wonder why it's a single. Well, I have a double on mine, so that is not needed. Okay, so these are the brackets um, to hold the caliper on. So you see this has the three um, bolt holes um, that held the drum on that we just took off and then the caliper box on here. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, 
Yeah, that's a freak. Nice. Oh no, it's a. I think that's for the master cylinder. Um, these are spring clips for the pads. These are bearings, that's the same, inner and outer. Uh, some bolts, uh, new seals that will fit. God damn, these are sharp. I'm gonna cut my fingers open. So that goes in there. No hoses, and then these must be the calipers. Oh, look at that! These actually feel okay. All these brands, China. Yeah, boy. So I guess we start with this. Or should I read the instructions? Nah. I think we just bought this and I don't know what these are for. And that's it. There's no other stuff. And I'll clean these first. I mean, really, I should paint them. But... I think I'm going to make sure that everything fits first, and then if if the, if I'm happy with everything, I might paint these. Well, I can still paint them when they're on the car, so that's no big deal. Okay, after going through everything again, and uh, after not reading the instructions, um, I decided to go and get this drift tool again, which I used yesterday, um, to knock these bearing um, shells in. So the bearings uh, come in two pieces. Um, this ring um, gets knocked into the case of the disc, so it's an interference fit, so you have to drift it in. Um, so I'm gonna use these drifts, it's really cool, they fit in there, it's about the same size. So with this you get like even force um, to knock it in, which is really good. Alternatively, if you don't have one of these, you have to tap um, either side of the shell to get it to go in evenly. Um, so that's if you don't have something like this. Uh, that's what I've been doing for years, but it's nice to have this. Um, right, let's knock these bad boys in. Okay. change there. Yeah, it wasn't going in actually perfectly square that's why I just took this away and tapped the edge that was high so but that's all the way in now and then we'll turn it over and we'll do the other one and I need to change this to a bigger one so obviously it goes uh, a certain way up so you can put the bearing in so don't put it in upside down because then you won't get it in. So let's just get that square. Done. Okay, so I gave this a quick clean up with some brake cleaner. Um, I will paint this outer piece, but not right now. I'm just gonna make sure this all goes together. So I'm gonna bolt this on, use the original bolts, and then we'll smash this so that I can actually, I have to grease these first. You should grease these bearings before you put them in. Pack the, pack the grease right inside of there. Um, so yeah, that's very important. So I'll grease this and then I'll put that in and then I'll put this dust shield on and I think I would just lightly tap that with the nylon mat. So what you do is you get a big glob of grease like that uh, and then you 
you pack it in there like this and it pushes all the grease between the rollers. It's messy, that's why I like to wear gloves. I don't actually particularly like getting dirty. So you can see that it's packed it full of grease now. So that can go in there. That and then I'll do the same for this one. can actually see when you force it through like this, you can see it squeezing through the bearing, through the rollers. You have to really, there we go. I'll just put that aside for now. There we go. And now, let's knock this in. So, that's the other one. this is ready to go. Let's move on to the car. Okay, so these are actually handed uh, left and right um, because the bolts are in a slightly different position. So, uh, these are actually handed for left and right because the bolt patterns are slightly different. Um, so, I just took these two spacers off. I don't think we need those. And this just faces up. Oh, that's the wrong side. This just faces onto there like that. And I did actually have a quick look in the instructions and it says use uh, pre-65 cars, use the original um, bolts. And it's very important that you use hardened um, bolts. It says in the instructions also. So these are the original ones, so these are good. Um, I've cleaned the threads up uh, because I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite. And like I said in one of my previous videos, if the threads are not clean, the Loctite's not going to set. So I'm going to put that on first. And it's a 15 millimeter socket you need. So a little bit of this it has a spring washer, line it up, and it said um, you should tighten this to 25 um, foot-pounds of torque. So it's not crazy tight. So I have my torque wrench here. works. There we go. Yeah, just one more time. There we go. Beautiful. Righty. So, I guess the disc is next. Doesn't seem right. Maybe this spacer has to be left on. Yeah, it does. Okay, this spacer for sure um, should be left on because it fits perfectly inside this 
rear seal and this doesn't have a stop to go up to so and this has a chamfer edge on it which matches the profile of this so there's a couple of little burrs on there I'm just going to clean these up um, it's where I took it off actually so I just file those off because otherwise it will ruin if there's any marks on this it will ruin the the seal and that's no good you don't want dust to get it in with your bearings okay I put that back on took the burrs off and now this should slide on and stop shouldn't have to tap this on. Okay, so here's the situation. I've just moved around to the other side. Um, this is the, obviously the um, bearing that goes on. And I just wanted to see what the fitment was like because this is kind of what I'm up against. Um, so this is the spacer that I um, put back on and this bearing stops against that and then leaves a gap between the disc and um, this here. Like I, I was putting the drift on the inside and knocking this um, solid piece so I wouldn't damage the bearing because if I push it on or hammer the actual disc, you're hammering against this and that's no good. You could damage the bearing. Well, maybe I was making a fuss about nothing. I just hit it a little bit harder and it's gone all the way on there. So no biggie smalls. I just smashed some grease in there at the same time. Okay, so then that goes on there. Wipe off the excess. And then we'll just finger tight this on just to stop it falling off and remember this is a right hand thread and that one's going on there we go okay. let's wind it on Oops. there we go a little bit tight Uh, inner pad and outer pad and I'll put these two aside so that goes there and then this one so you have the curved bit which goes against the uh, and then that one goes there like that right so I had a look on the caliper and it has these two allen head bolts so I've got the allen key ready and these dust covers so if we push those out like that then I'm guessing Snug these up. Man, that's really easy, huh? Okay, I just couldn't leave without laying on some quick and dirty paint on these. Um, I just put some matte black on there. Um, and same on here. So I just thought, well, they'll be nice and dry in the morning and uh, it's one step ahead. So, same as the other side. These actually look quite nice after I just quickly put some paint on last night. Um, I also have a new um, bush kit for the anti-roll bar. Um, I painted the anti-roll bar the other day. Um, and here we have the inner and outer um, 
pads, uh, the clips, and the bearings, obviously. So, um, oh yes, I also bought um, some new of these locking tab uh, washers that um, stop the locking nuts that go on the end here from loosening. So um, they normally snap um, right here because if you bend them a couple of times, they obviously snap off. So um, I took, I got some of them just to be on the safe side and yeah, it's ready to go. Right, this I believe is how the clip goes. So can I get it out again? Uh, oops. So that um, tab piece fits inside there and the clip goes underneath the between the pad and the bracket and then you hook it over so then it's behind this one right silly me um i just realized as i was trying to um, install these um, rattle clips is that the um, bleed nipple should be at the top um, this caliper's for the other side and you can see here if I hold the, this caliper up, the bleed screw is then at the top. So I just need to swap these over and... Right, now we're in business. So, um, bleed screw is at the top. Um, I put the clips in. It's kind of odd that they, they don't actually clip around this piece. They just stick out like that. But um, I double checked the picture and that's how they go. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned before that you should put some thread... Um, locker on the bolts that hold caliper on so I just did that and so this this side is pretty much done um, make sure that your hoses freely are not being caught or it's not twisted or anything like that and um, so yeah I'll smash the other side on okay this is something I always do um, I have this copper paste and um, I normally add it to the parts of the um, pad uh, where it's moving, where it slides. Um, because as, as you can see, um, it actually slides on these sliders and you have the piston inside here. So um, I'm gonna add a little bit of this copper, copper paste in that little groove there. Just helps it with not seizing. Um, where the piston goes on the back of the pad, I'll add a little bit there. Um, but on this side, obviously the center bit um, doesn't need that grease. So I'll just put it either side on the pad. So the outer pad, which is this one, I'll just put a bit here and here. And then on the little groove. And then on the inner one where the piston goes I'll just put a bit, little bit there it just stops things sticking and makes it slide a bit better okay I just added you really don't need a lot of this stuff a lot goes a long way so just a little bit in those grooves and um, yeah I'll put these in okay so I've just put the um, shocks on and everything else on the other side um, don't forget to clean the um, rotors with brake cleaner because they have like this um, transport grease or something to stop them flash rusting um, so yeah everything's back together on the other side I've set that I've put the speedo um, cable back in with the circlip on um, so this is the right hand side of the car um, which means this is right hand thread like normal um, Titans if you go clockwise um, so on this older model with the king and link pin we have two uh, nuts the outer one locks the inner one plus we have these lock-in washers um, it has a tab on it here um, that slides in this groove here and one tab folds one way over the inner nut and the outer uh, the other one folds the other way and locks the outer nut. So, what I normally do is I tighten the first one up 
not too tight, don't go crazy on it. <coughs> and I think this is um, and spin it and then see if we can go a little bit tighter. And you feel <coughs> that there's um, tension. Yeah, so there's now, you can feel that the bearing is quite tight. So then you just back it off a little bit, like take that tension off. Hold on, I'll do that again. So tight. And then knock it off a little bit. And there should be like, um, it shouldn't be really loose and just spin forever. There should be some kind of resistance on there. Yeah, so that feels about right. Um, because I, I think I mentioned earlier, if you put the, if you do this up too tight, um, the, the bearings, you crush the bearings and you'll cause friction and they'll heat up and they'll seize. Um, so there should be some resistance, but not too much. So then you put this uh, locking washer on there, and then you put this outer one on, like that. Now if I was to tighten this up, it would also move the one I've just set. So I actually have this skinny um, adjustable that can fit in, hopefully, behind here. Or maybe I'll just, na maybe I'll just put this tab over first. So you just knock this. Tab over like this. And then I'll sneak this one in here. And you hold this one so it doesn't move and then you tighten against it. So That. And then you nip that up and then double check <coughs> that it's not too tight. The caliper is just touching on the disc there because there's no pressure in it, so it's it's moving freely. So don't worry about that noise. Yep, so that seems good. So then I just bend this tab out here like this. And give it a little tap with the hammer. Like that and a little bit more on that one. Like that. And then you're all set. Um, I don't know if I mentioned before the type of grease is just a bearing grease. I think high temperature bearing grease um, is good. Um, I always put a little bit in the cap there and then uh, spin it and then you just tap on this cap and it's good to go boom right let's bleed some brakes okay um i filled the reservoir right to the top um with dot four brake fluid and then i've got my special spanner i absolutely love this spanner one of the best things I ever bought because it has the 11 millimeter um, for these, um, what are they called? Things. <laughs> um, and as you can see, it's a pipe spanner. So 
it fits over there nicely because so many times if you use a normal spanner on these bright like an open-ended spanner on these brass fittings that's what it is a fitting um they round off they're a nightmare but with this it's just works so much better so and then if i come around to the caliper uh i think this you take this seal off i think this is a 10 mil so that's why it's a 10 and 11. boom look at that awesome okay i'm gonna try this um this basically you connect to the airline and it um sucks the fluid through the tube so it has this that you just push onto the nipple there and i will um, turn on the air crank this open and it should start coming through. Let's see if the reservoir is coming up, coming down. Yeah, so it's moving down. So it's definitely coming through. Okay, I um, just did this side a little bit more again. I actually opened the valve up a little bit more this time and I could see it coming through. Uh, I went and pumped the pedal and uh, I have some um, tension on the pedal, which is great. And I can feel that the pads have moved. So that's great. Um, also what I made here is this is an old um, 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 fluid bottle. And all I did was drilled a hole in the top, um, a little hole there as a breather um, for the pressure to escape and then a, a, a tube all the way to, to the bottom. Um, I've left a bit of old fluid in the bottom so air can't escape back up the tube. Uh, and that will just go on there. Like so. And then I leave my spanner on there and I can just crack it open. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack this open and then I'm gonna pump the brake. And hopefully it should pump the fluid through. There's no air bubbles in, in the tube. So I'll just nip that up. Perfect. Do the other side and then I think I'm happy with that. Right, let's move on to the steering arms and anti-roll bar. Um, like I said, I've got new bushes for the anti-roll bar. And these are the steering arms that were on the car. So as you can see that um, these ones are an inch shorter because the beam was narrower, same with this one, and slightly different setup with these to these. This is more the modern style where you just have one locking nut, um, but the older style has two locking nuts similar to the bearings that we just adjusted, and they also have like these locking tab washers. So they're a bit more of a pain because these are so easy just to loosen, um, twist this and then it adjusts your tracking. Um, but with these you have to take the tabs, release the tabs, yeah, you get it. So I'm gonna um, swap these ball joints to these. Um, go and find the nuts, I cleaned them all up. Um, and then, if I just come around here, these are the steering boxes that I have. So, um, this is the one that was on the car and you can see it's proper leaky. Even just leaked on the mat there. And also there's like, there's nothing there. And I know I adjusted it um, when I changed the beam over last time, but I don't remember it being this 
loose. Uh, and then I have this one, which I was cleaning up and then noticed that it's all kind of corroded. This side was the worst. You know, you can see it's like corroded, exposed that. So I could, and this one feels a bit gritty. So maybe, it, I don't know. So I think I'm going to take the top off of this and see what's going on inside just quickly. And I could probably use this top, even though they're slightly different, the, the case looks the same. This just has a different fill-in hole. This has these two little rubber bungs. Um, but I also have this one, which is from an earlier car, like 50s car. Um, I mean, I guess, well, they must, it must fit. Um, but I haven't really had a look at this one yet, so maybe even this one could be an option, although it does look a bit wet as well. Right, I've jumped ahead a little bit. Um, basically, I uh, installed the steering box. I actually used the older one from the 50s because it was like the best of a bad bunch. Uh, and that gives me an opportunity to um, refurbish one of the other ones. Um, I've put the steering arms in. They're not set up or anything. I just put them in and tighten them up. I put the um, steering um, back on. Um, I just need to put the bolt in, obviously. And yeah, I put the wheels on and put it on blocks just to see what the ride height is like. So um, it's a little bit higher than where I want it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the um, beam to the ride height that I want, lock it up, and then I'm going to set the um, toe on the front wheels. It's towing out a bit at the moment, which means um, um, they are wider at the front of the wheel than they are at the back. And it needs to be, I think I remember like exactly the same front and back, like exactly straight or maybe one millimeter towing, but we'll cover that. So I'm going to adjust the ride height right now to where I want it. And then that will be the next thing. Um, I also put the back wheels back on the ground, put the handbrake on and put it in gear um, because I'm going to have to get underneath the car and I've put it on these wooden blocks. So that's really important that it doesn't roll off and squash me. So bear that in mind. Never get under the car if it's not safe. So I jacked the front of the car up, um, loosened off the adjusters, and then I brought the jack down to just about where I wanted the ride height. And then I tightened the, the locking nuts up, um, jumped up and down on it a little bit to, to make it settle. So I think that's about right. It might be a little too low, um, but I can always raise it up a little bit because um, the back's up in the air a little bit as well. Um, we'll see what it's like after I've taken it for a drive and then, uh, yeah, I can always bring it up a little bit. So let's do this uh, track in. But as you can see now, the tires um, are not uh, too far under the arches. It looks so much better. It's amazing what that extra inch can do, right? Perfect. Um, I'm going to see what these, um, these are, I think these are four and a half inch wide and they are five and a half inch wide. Um, these have 155 tire on it and that's a 165. So I'm going to see what this looks like because I kind of fancy having the skinnier tire on the front. Um, but these tires are really bad. Um, I'd have to order some new tires and I think I'll go for the classic sprints Bredestein um classic splint sprints because yeah these are these are nasty so um and I'll paint I don't really like the chrome so I, I if I put them on I'll paint them the same as them so how to set the track in um so what I've done visually 
is put them about even. So as you can see that the front of this tire is slightly pointing in as though the car's turning a little bit left. And if you look on the other side, it's also pointing in a little bit at the front like it's wanting to turn right. So we want to get them about even. Um, so this is a bit of a crude way of doing it, but it, I mean, I've been doing it like this on these and it, it's, I've never had a problem, but you can obviously have this professionally aligned with lasers and stuff like that, but I'm not going to do that today. So um, it's quite simple. You have to rotate these evenly either side. And um, if you rotate this one way, it will move the um, toe in or toe out one way. And obviously if you move it the other way, then it moves the other way. So these are all loose. I haven't tightened any of these up. So I'm gonna get a um, grip on there, turn it until it looks visually um, straight. And then I'm gonna measure uh, with a tape measure um, from one part of the tire tread to the other side and get them about even. That's why I put the car up on these blocks of wood because you should have the car um, at ride height. Um, if I jacked this car up so the wheels were hanging in the air, you'd get a different reading. This is one thing that's so much easier to do without the fuel tank in. So I basically get some grips on here and then you, I don't think it rotated, did it? Did it slip? So, oh it does, yeah. So you basically get, rotate this and um, until the, the wheels looks like it's going straight and you have to make sure that these don't pinch up, that they're slack. So loosen them right off. Um, so yeah, I'll do both of them and then go from there. Um, right, so you take a point on your tread. So let's go over there. And then you bring the tape measure across and then you measure to the same point on the tread on the other side of the tire. And then you measure um, at the back of the tire as well. So you have to get underneath. And you basically um, get the measurement the same. Um, I've actually set mine so it's a tiny bit toe in, a one millimeter toe in. Um, so the, the, they're slightly pointing in at the front if that makes sense. Okay, that's it for today. It's gone pretty well, I think. Uh, I think it looks so much better now that the front end is a little bit wider. Probably doesn't mean a lot to most people, but those little things to me really matter. Um, I have yet to put the fuel tank in. Uh, I've decided that I'm gonna bleed the rear brakes as well, because um, I, I'm gonna adjust them, bleed them, make sure everything's right, because of the pedal doesn't feel um, great, but obviously I'll know more when I drive it. And I want to change the rear tyres to the same as the front tyres. The back ones are 185s. So I think I'm going to go for four matching tyres, uh, which I, I, had, I have a couple that came off of the blue 65 I have. So I'm going to change those tyres as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with how it looks. It's exactly how I wanted it to look. It was bugging me with this, um, with it being narrow at the front. Oh, that's another thing. I haven't put the anti-roll bar on, so I need to do that as well. Um, so yeah, but that's enough for today because it's getting late again. Time just goes like that. Uh, yes, thanks for watching and um, stay tuned.